My name's Barry McGuigan and um, I'm 83 years of age and um, I'm a human being that took up surfing like all the millions of other surfers in the world and uh, it's one of my great enjoyments. First time I saw anybody surfing would have been at Tamarama and uh, it probably would have been Jack Bluey Mays. The equipment then was mainly the toothpick boards, which range from 14 feet up to about 20 feet. Probably the first feeling was uh, just carrying the board down. Was, they were pretty heavy boards, you know, about you know, 50, 60 pounds. And um, trying to get control of it, because once uh, the board set off in a certain direction, that's the direction it took. And uh, if you try to turn it, it was rather difficult. As the years went by, we learned how to turn them by just dragging a foot into the water, and that's what it helped with it. Of course, in the, in the old days, with surfboards, they always thought the heavier the board, the better. So the boards, the foam boards, used to be tasked with 12 ounce glass. And the reason they did it was because if they hit the rocks, they never got dinged. And uh, that's the reason they did it. And then they suddenly realised, well, if you were going to perform in contests, you had to be able to turn the boards a bit quicker. Yes, I got interested in yoga by just one day I picked up this book in one of my friends' houses and uh, it was all about Hatha Yoga, which is the physical side of yoga. And it just made common sense to me. So I decided to start doing it. And everyone thought it was a bit crazy, you know, you know trying fasting and meditating. Not that I did much meditating. But uh, it just made my body more pliable. And uh, I seemed to have more energy. Yeah, it was uh, 63, we were at Makaha and we'd um, come from by boat from Sydney to Hawaii at that time. And um, Bob McTavish and Chichi from the north side had stayed away with us. And um, we sort of collected a bit of food when we used to go around the meal times on the boat and bring it back to them, feed them, and they were sleeping under our bunks there. And anyway, they were lucky enough, they got to Hawaii and uh, they were thinking about sort of um, swimming ashore. And I said to them, I said, well, you've got to dive off the boat, it's about a couple hundred feet high. Like, even if you survive the dive, probably sharks will get you. So they decided not to do that. And uh, we arrived at Honolulu Harbour and um, there were guests from Hawaii that were allowed aboard as long as they had business passes. So there were two young girls there who came aboard and McTavish sort of conned them out of their business passes and him and Chichi just walked off the boat. And uh, they were surfing over at sunset there for a couple of weeks before they were reported and uh, they were captured and uh, before that, actually, I was at Makaha and uh, these uh, three well-dressed guys came along, you know, ties and suits, and uh, I thought, something's strange here. And they approached me and uh, sat me in the back of their car, and there were three FBI agents. And uh, they asked me if I knew McTavish, and I said, yes, of course I know him. He said, do you know where he is? And I said, no, I said, he's just come over to go surfing. And luckily for me, they accepted my story and that was it.